in my eyes. Do you see fear? You come at me with sword and spear, but I come in the name of the God of Israel. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> right between the eyes! Did you see that? Anyone? Uh, of course not. Okay, then. One more time. <laughs> tally, tally, no, no. I'm trying to protect us from this Philistine. <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 whoa. No, not that way. Come on. Back to your mom. Right, Philistine. Oh, wait. Right between the eyes. Oh, of course. That one you saw. Tally! Tally, no! I'm coming, girl! Shira! I will bring her home safely. I'm almost in love!
What you have just watched is a concept short for a musical animated feature film on the story of David. And our vision is to tell it in the same quality as movies like Tangled and Frozen. This is more than a movie. This is a movement to join people from all over the world to try and make the world's most watched animated theatrical release. You can show your interest in investing by going to angel.com slash David. Growing up in the wild of Africa was the most incredible experience. And it was there that I bumped into the most amazing character of God and fell in love with him. At the same time, I was reading David's story and it just really struck me. On one particular canoe trip on the Zambezi River where you could canoe for days and not see a human being, I was reading the scriptures and I read, I found in David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. And I thought how amazing it would be to do a film that would give people all over the world a glimpse into God's heart. We grew up on a farm that had no electricity. I only saw my first film when I was 14 years old and it was such an electric experience. I was blown away by the power of film and the power of story to connect with people and move people. And from that day, I became passionate to tell a story on the life of David. The question is, can a group of farmers from Africa make a global hit that's gonna reach the world? This is in and of itself an incredible David versus Goliath story. There's an African proverb that says, if you wanna go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go together. And in order to tell a story as big as David, we need people from all around the world to come together. Over the last 20 years, Jackie and I have just been blown away by how God has miraculously drawn talent to us. Now we have the most awesome, high quality team. Like Nathan Stanton, who spent 22 years at Pixar. Jonas Myron, a Grammy Award winning musician. Borja Montura, a Disney animation alumni. Other talent from massive films like Big Hero 6, Tangled, Finding Nemo, Zootopia, Moana, Prince of Egypt, and many more. Our first breakout hit is Jungle Beat, an incredible and beautiful show. On our YouTube channel, we get over 2 billion views a year. We've got 7 million subscribers. We also recently released our first animated feature film called Jungle Beat the Movie. And incredibly, it was on Netflix's top 10 for over two weeks, both live action and animated feature films in the US. We are also doing a theatrical release of Jungle Beat the Movie in China later this year and are in production of Jungle Beat the Movie 2. What really excites me is if you take Jungle Beat the Movie, we produce that for $5 million. And I'd really encourage you to go and watch it on Netflix to see the quality of movie we produce for that price. And just imagine the quality of movie we could produce on David with the proper budget. With David, we considered the route of engaging with Hollywood and there is significant interest down that route. But we really felt that from a creative point of view, we need to stay the head and not the tail of this project. And it's a slingshot, like David went with a slingshot to fight Goliath. We really believe that the strategy and needs to be outside the Hollywood system for it to work. In this vein, we are thrilled to be working with Angel Studios for distribution. Angel Studios did the TV series The Chosen, which has become the world's biggest TV series on the life of Jesus Christ. The Chosen has generated hundreds of millions of views and tens of millions of dollars. We've already got $19 million of investments and need another $35 million to complete this project. We need your help to bring God's heart to the world through the story of David. Go to angel.com slash David to show your support for this project now. And let's join together to try and make the world's most watched animated theatrical release. Welcome everyone. It's just incredible to be this far into 2022 already. Ready. It feels like just the other day we were ending off our live streams and our first round of crowdfunding at the end of last year. So just want to start by welcoming everyone who's on this live stream. Some of you will have already been investors and part of our, our team and our journey. And some of you might be new to the David story and just finding out a lot about it. And, and I just want to say welcome to everyone who's just joining into this call. Thank you for your time, because I know time is a precious commodity for us all. What we want to do with this first live stream of 2022 is just really do a kind of a state of the nations, a bit of a catch up and where, where are we at? What have we still got to do and, and where are we still wanting to go? So this is going to be hopefully a very good overview for, for those of you just joining the journey. And for those of you who might have joined the journey a while ago um, and wondering, you know, where are we at in the process? I just want to be as clear as we can as to where we are on this incredibly exciting journey. And yeah, just crazy to be, as I say, this far into 2022. Quickly to tell you what we're going to go through tonight. We, are, so we have just started our new Testing the Waters campaign, gauging interest for our round two. And if you go to angel.com slash David, you can actually see the, the updated information on that on the website. And you can see where we're at. And the exciting news is we started about a week ago gauging interest. And we at the beginning of this live stream, we were already $834,000 had been pledged for round two which I'll come back to later. But, uh, and I'll talk about the uh, gauging the interest and what that means later on the call. 
Tonight, I also want to talk about Angel Studios, who are our distribution partner. I want to tell you a bit more about them, although some of you will know them well, and, but also what we've been thinking about and how we are going to... Oh, Benjamin just pledged $1,000. Thank you, Benjamin. I, I really appreciate that. So, so early on in the live stream, thank you for getting us, getting us started. Thank you. And I, we've got really exciting thoughts on how to distribute the movie. Um, and so I'd like to share that with you as well tonight. We've also got a very special announcement, and Weston also just pledged $1,000. So thank you, guys. Hey, that's, that's really awesome, and, and I really appreciate the support. That's amazing. Um, I also want to talk about some new content that we've got, which is just very exciting. I'm just going to tease it, and in a, in a subsequent live stream, we're going to talk about it more. So I'm going to talk about some new content that we've got that's going to support the David film, which I'll share with you on this. And then, guys, just to say... Um, we obviously are so clear and we know where we're at, but if you've got questions, um, please just post them in the live stream and the guys who are behind the scenes will, will flag them near the end and we'll take questions. So I love questions because questions are often the best way to unpack things and get to the bottom of things. So please feel free to, to pop questions on, on the live stream. So firstly, I just want to quickly talk about the passion of this film. And just to say, in terms of quality, I think we've said on a previous live stream that the best way I can summarize this movie is perhaps a hybrid between Prince of Egypt and Tangled. So the epicness of Prince of Egypt, some of the accuracy and the beauty of it, so some of that, that kind of heart behind the Prince of Egypt, but then some of the entertainment value and pace and human energy of Tangled. And in my particular heart, I just love David's story because he's just, whether you believe in God, or whether you don't believe in God, he's just this most incredible magnetic character. But, but why I'm passionate about him, there's a verse in Acts that says, I found in David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. And I just love his story. And I believe if we tell his story well and we craft it well with the right energy, it'll give people a glimpse um, into God's heart. Just that incredible, adventurous, amazing, beautiful heart of God, which is, you know, sometimes I, I, when I was at university, I realized some of my friends viewed God as like a boring, stuffy headmaster, if at all. But David's story and his journey just brings to life this incredible character who's adventurous, who's kind, who's magnetic, who's an amazing leader. So if we can tell an amazing story on David, yo, we want to tell it at a super high quality and entertaining, but we also believe it'll, it'll really impact the world um, and, and ignite people's imaginations and hearts. That, that's one of the goals behind it. I just want to catch you add in the process, um, where we've got to in production, because we're going to talk about two things tonight. One is you've got to be able to produce a world-class film that stands alongside movies like I've just said, like Prince of Egypt and Tangled, movies like that. So I want to talk about where we're at on the journey and why we think we can make a movie of that quality. And then I want to go to distribution. But I'm going to ask the Angel team just to play a video I did recently for social media, which will just give us a quick overview on where we're at in the process. And then once that video is played, I'll, I'll add a little bit more to it at the end. It's a very short video, I think three or four minutes. So maybe we can switch across to that video and then I'll, I'll pick up with you guys on the other side. It's hard to believe how incredibly fast 2022 is going and we just wanted to pop out a video and connect with our David community. Um, I thought it'd be really cool just to update the community where we're at and, and what goes into animation and, and where we're at on our journey right now. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. It's something we've said on our live streams in which we really believe in. And animation in particular is an incredible journey. It's, it's, a, it's a long process. Typically, an animated feature film takes four to seven years to make. So animation is this long investment of watering and fertilizing and growing the, the brand or the story. And if you do it well, then potentially for decades afterwards, the animation just speaks on and lives on. We all know, you know, inc incredible examples of animations that have gone on for 50, even up to 100 years. Um, so just to say, that's the journey we want. As a quick recap, um, there's already been $19.6 million invested in the movie. Um, the total budget for the movie is just under 55 million. At the end of last year, 2021, we did a $5 million crowd fundraise, which went really well. In 30 days, we raised $5 million. What we've still got to do to finish the finance raise for the movie is raise another $30 million. And just to say, if we, and we're really feeling positive and if we're successful in continuing with our finance raise, the production, will finish at the end of 2024, which means we'd aim to release the movie in 2025. And I know that sounds a long, long way away, but just to put it back to the norm of animation, typically animation takes four to seven years to produce. So 
we are we are well down the track we've spent a lot of money we've, we've been in production for a long time so if you are joining the story at this moment the good news is that you're not starting from scratch you're starting like well into the journey and i just felt it's really important to keep communicating like the timelines and what goes into animation and where we're at in budgets and we just want i just wanted to share that with you So thanks for all of you again on this live stream. I'll try and not repeat too much of what was in that video, but a few highlights. And I actually want to pull from the, the when we started the live stream, one of my wife's favorite proverbs is an African proverb. That's if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And what really excites me about this journey is just that of going far, going together, building a community, which is where I want to segue into Angel Studios. But before I go into that community building and the long journey, I just want to say, to clarify what was on that video so there's 19.6 million dollars that has been invested and spent on the movie already we did a finance raise at the end of last year where we did a crowdfunding raise which some of you uh, i hope were part of on this call and that was five million dollars and then we've now got another we're going into a testing the water phase now because we've got 30 million dollars still to raise for the movie and what we're doing right now is a pledging phase a testing the water phase to gauge interest to look towards whether we can do another big crowdfunding raise um towards later in the year, like mid-year, somewhere, somewhere there, depending on how our, our pledging phase goes. So that's just to give you a quick overview. And I hope you got the, the fruit farming analogy because I think it's a beautiful way of describing animation. Um, someone just pledged $2,000. So thank you so much for the support. It's, it's amazing. But what I, what I love, and just so you know, I come from Africa, as you know, I come from a farming background, um, more of a wildlife background, actually. But I love that analogy to an apple orchard because if you water and fertilize an apple orchard for five years then after five years you start getting apples but not before but then if you get that far then you get apples for 20 years and that's the beauty of animation is that it's it's a long journey but if you get there it's got this huge potential to bear bear fruit and that's one thing i wanted to try and really because for people who don't know the animation industry it's like why does it take so long um, so i just really want to try it explain the industry and, and the process and the one thing i want to say that's so exciting is that although it's a long time it gets us a chance to get to know each other to be on the adventure together and yeah it's, so it's not like oh my goodness it's 2025 so the movie gets released it's all the exciting things that are going to happen along the way as we cast voiceover we do music we oh wow and there's just been a pledge for five thousand dollars which is just immense thank you that that's so amazing so if you guys can join the journey, um, it's not going to be a boring journey. That's one thing I can promise you. It's, uh, we're going to be interacting a lot. You're going to be hearing a lot from behind the scenes. There's just so much rich, rich, you know, so many rich things happening behind the scenes that we're going to share with you. Um, and Melinda just pledged three thousand and thirty-three dollars, which is an awesomely interesting number, Melinda. I'd be interested to know why that number one day. But thank you. That's that's very cool. Um, you know, the one thing I wanted to share with you guys, and, and this will be saved for another another live stream down the line, but one thing we are passionate about is creating a very authentic film and an accurate film. We've done four trips to Israel already, and on one of those trips we went with one of the world's leading archaeologists. We went to the Valley of Eli. We went to all David's sites. And so we really wanted to come from a very deep place. And there's so much beautiful information to share with you guys, which we can unpack on this journey together. But... We, we are really serious about taking this project to, to that level and doing it beautifully. I just want to talk about distribution, actually, for a second, and a bit about Angel Studio. So the one big challenge in the movie industry that you face is, one, can you make an amazing movie, which I'll come back to, and I really believe we can, and I'd love any questions on that as you guys are listening. The other thing is, can you distribute it? And this is where I'm so excited about Angel Studios. Many of you on this, this live stream will know The Chosen. And what I love about Angel Studios models is when the rest of the world is zagging, they are zigging. Or when the rest of the world is zigging, they're zagging. And they are so innovative and breaking the mold, breaking the rules, but in a super smart way. And, and just to say, when we engaged with them, their founders actually came out to our studio. We spent two weeks together. They traveled all the way to Cape Town. Um, and we spent a long time engaging, which, which really struck me that their commitment to fly all the way around the world to properly engage, understand our team, our creative culture and what we were doing. Um, and what I love about them, what they're doing with The Chosen is that, that they are reversing the, 
traditional distribution model. And for those who don't know the Chosen app, it's one of the examples. There's other IPs in the ecosystem, which they are helping distribute and get to market. But I'm going to refer to the Chosen for the moment. It's If you go down and load, download the Chosen app, you can watch it for free, um, which is amazing. And then they've got two buttons there, which is pay it forward or licensing and merchandising. And it's been incredibly successful. You pay it forward if you want the creators to continue to make this kind of content. Um, and you know that whole model has turned the world on its head because normally, as we know, you pay for content, but here they're giving it away. And I just think that's quite a beautiful philosophy. One, one thing I've always believed is that the world's economy is buying and selling, but God's kingdom is giving and receiving. And I think that model of, of distribution really speaks to giving and receiving. So giving away the content for free in the case of the chosen, and then receiving in terms of people just supporting and wanting to see more of that content, which is interesting. Just to say our passion and, and the angel guys are just the most incredible crowd of innovative uh, marketers that, that I've come across in my career. And yeah, we're just very excited to work with them. What I want to share with David that we're slightly different to the chosen. So David, for me, it's always been made and in my mind, the vision for it has always been on cinema. So a cinematic movie. And we really want to release it in cinemas around the world. Our goal is to get a global cinematic release. And that, that's, that's where we're going at. Um, I'll just give you one example that they actually had some remarkable success with an episode of The Chosen at the end of last year towards Christmas. They released it through an independent body called Fathom in cinemas in the US. And I think it was during the week time and just broke all records for independent movies released on that, on that model. And, and so that really, as a test case, showed the power of building community. So that's the other thing I want to speak to, and I'll come back to cinema. The incredible power of this route is that you build community. People go with you on the journey. They're actually shareholders in the movie and on in the story. So they're stakeholders. They care about the movie like they care about the, the Chosen. So when, when the guys from Angel Studios release a cinematic release of an episode of The Chosen at cinema, there's, there's incredible support because people know about the property, they're part of the community, there's a lot of great communication. There's a comment on the screen now, I always look forward to angel communication, because I think what they're great at is just, which is key to building a community, is communication. Um, and that's what's exciting me about David, is we, we over the next two years, and already over last year, we're building a community, and I wanna, we wanna build an even bigger and bigger community with the help of the guys at Angel Studios. One of our thoughts, in terms of getting into cinema. And I, I just want to quickly share with you a story that it comes a little bit from the art of war. And in the art of war, he says, if you're in a battle and you see across these plains, these huge army coming against you with chariots and you don't have chariots, then take the battle into the foot country where, where you don't have to have chariots to fight. And the one thing when the angel guys were here, I was talking through the pay it forward model and I was saying, wouldn't it be incredible if in cinemas around the world, particularly the third world, like where I live in Africa, South America, parts of South America and parts of Asia, if we had a pay it forward model for cinema, where basically we said to people who could afford around the world and love the David movie from the Christian community, from the Jewish community, and just people from the secular community as well. Here's a, here's a way where you can go online onto an app or a website and you can pay it forward. So you can buy cinema space in Cape Town and Zimbabwe in Kenya, Sri Lanka. And for example, let me take Cape Town, for example. Let's say somebody came and bought some cinema or some seats in Cape Town, then we would get kids and people trucked in from some of the high density areas around Cape Town to come and watch the David movie. And I just think that's such a cool way of getting the movie distributed. I think it's just a, a very innovative and exciting way to, to really move that, that needle. And, and when we were talking with the Angel Studio guys, not out of a sense of ego, but out of a sense of vision and trying to set a real goal, we said, what about if we set it in our minds to make this the most watched animated theatrical film of all time? So just so you're not to say we'll get there, but we're certainly going to give it a good go. And that's our passion. That's our goal is to make an incredible movie that becomes the most watched animated theatrical film of all time. And, and if that's, I hope that's making sense. By the way, guys, if there's even questions, oh, wow, there's two more pledges there for $500. Thank you. And another one for $500. We, we can't thank you enough. And what excites me, Obviously, we need the finances to make the movie. What excites me even more is getting you guys into part of our, into part of the team and part of the journey, because I think that's the power. The power is in the community that goes way, obviously it helps finance the film, but it goes way beyond that, which is, which is amazing. Um, the other thing I just wanted to say to all of you on this live stream, my, my vision for this, oh, someone asked there, where do we pledge? Just so you know, you go to angel.com slash David. 
Um, and that's the place. It's on the top right-hand corner there, angel.com slash David. And there's there's a lot of information there about the project. Um, in case you want to read a bit more, obviously, before you pledge, there's, there's a lot more information about the movie there. But that's where you can go is angel.com slash David. The other thing which I really wanted to share with you, which I think is exciting, is that our passion is not just a movie. So if you invest in this, you're actually investing in an, in an IP company, if I can say it that way. Because I'll give you an example, and I want to break one bit of exciting news that actually illustrates this point. I'm going to come to the exciting news, but let me finish on the, the IP company story. So with David, yes, what we're funding right now is David, an animated feature film. One of our goals is to make that a super successful film. And then one of our passions is to take that one day and turn that into a Broadway musical. And just to, by way of illustration, if you look at the Lion King Broadway musical, it's Disney's highest earning single entity in the, in the ecosystem of all time. I think it's earned over 8 billion US dollars, the Broadway musical. But it's not so much the money I'm focusing in on that, but it's if it's done that much, imagine its reach, like how many people have seen the Lion King Broadway musical. So we don't want to just stop at David the movie. We want to take that forward into iterations like a Broadway musical. Also, in the way we've set up the company, and when you get when you get to that phase, you'll, you can read into it that nearly 10%, as we get money, the money goes back firstly to pay back the investors, plus, plus a percentage, but then we take 10% and we're going to invest that into new intellectual properties as we go. So just so you guys know, that's that's where we're going. And yeah, right now, I just wanted to share, we they're showing some footage from the demo, which you just watched. Um, and what this inspired and ignited is a conversation with an incredible organization called Go Minnow. And Go Minnow is a, a Christian live, uh, not live streaming, SVOD service in the USA. And when they saw this David Short, we formed a good relationship and they were like, wow, what about, and we're going to get them on a live stream coming up. But I just want to share this exciting news. And for those of you invested, this is already a breakthrough. Not that we're using any of the money because Go Minnow are investing, but what they've agreed to invest in is five David Shorts. Um, which are five by five minute David shorts, which are going to be essentially prequels to the animated feature film. And we've given each short a topic and, and in, in keeping with David's character, warrior, shepherd, poet, king, worshiper. So what I love about these five shorts is that they're just going to tee up David's character for the world and for our audience before they get to the movie. And it's just, that's how we've described them. And that's why we chose those five titles. And in quite a cool way, it connects with David's five stones that he picked up when he went to fight Goliath. So I'll just repeat that. We're going to have five shorts, warrior, shepherd, poet, king, worshiper. That's going to be the title of those five shorts. And we actually got into production already with Go Minnow, And those shorts will be finished production in Q1, end of Q1, 2023. And then those will get released to the world during the course of 2023 and between finishing them and getting to the actual movie itself. So... Yeah, and just to say, I'm, I cannot tell you how excited I'm about the scripts. The scripts are energetic, they're moving, they're full of heart, they just show David's character, um, and so yeah, I'm blown away by how exciting. Oh, wow, we've got two pledges there, one for $1,000, one for $5,000, and yeah, thank you guys for helping this movie happen. And just so you know, our team on our side, and Hillary, thank you, for, there's a $200 there as well, thank you so much. Eh? Well, while you guys pledge and, and help us fuel the engine for the movie, um, the one thing we're doing is working on things like getting these shorts going and working alongside that. And for those of you who are pledging, I just really want to say something as well. The team that's been built around this, this movie is absolutely incredible. So besides Sunrise, and if you go research, we've done a brand called Jungle Beats, which I mentioned in the, the first video at the start of this. Um, Jungle Beats, just as a quick way of example, is something we put together. It's got um, on YouTube, we've got 8 million subscribers. And we get about 150 million views a month. And I'll tell you why I'm telling you all this. And we've also released the first movie, Jungle Beat, the movie on Netflix in 2021. And Jungle Beat, the movie 2 is in production now. Um, why I'm telling you all that is just because that's one of the properties that our studio has developed. But alongside that, I was reading Michael Dell's biography and he said, always employ people smarter than yourself. And what I want to share with you guys is this David vision has been in, in my heart and in my mind for 20 years. So for 20 years, we've been building our team our technology, our pipeline to get to this point um, where we can really make a masterpiece. And and some of the guys who've been working on this project have worked on incredible films. Um, yeah, so from Moana to Tarzan to um, Finding Nemo, some of the guys who've been working on this project have worked at Pixar for 20 years. 
So I really want to share with you guys, one of my passions is building an incredibly strong team. And, and we really have built a strong team. So as you pledge and as you join into this journey, you, you really are pledging and building into an incredibly, incredibly strong artistic team. Behind me, by the way, you can see a little bit of the concept art that was done during that phase when we spent $19.6 million and we, we did, did those four trips to Israel. Um, we have probably got 800 to 1,000 pieces of artwork like this behind me. Um, character artwork, environment artwork, and just building the foundation for the movie. Um, yeah, so that's that's exciting. I just want to go and see if there's any questions at this point, because your questions are just amazing. So if you've got questions, I think that's where we, we're going to, that'll be great. Yeah, they've got some questions. So let's see. Question, is the voice actor for David and the teaser, uh, the official voice actor for David, young David for the movie, he really brought the character of young David to life in the teaser. So let me say that that's a great question. I'll say he's a contender. Um, why I say he's not a slam dunk because, and although we love his voice and, and he did sing well, we want to really just look for, and, and perhaps it's him, but we're still going to go out and audition just to check because, oh, this is what I, that's a great question because what I want to share about David's voice, we know that David wrote half the Psalms in the Bible. So he is literally one of the world's most prolific and famous songwriters. And I said on one of my previous live stream, if they could take a movie like P.T. Barnum's life, on P.T. Barnum's life, and turn that into, into a musical, The Greatest Showman, imagine what we can do with David. So to this question, what is critical uh, with the voice we get for David is that he can sing incredibly well. So we are definitely going to go out and audition. The guy who was on the demo will definitely be part of that audition process. But we are going to go out and audition um, and, and look for, just to make sure, we look for the best voice and singing voice we can find. So that's something that's going to be coming up in the next um, 12 months is that, that audition and auditioning for all the other characters um, in the cast. Yeah, so we can move to another question if there is one. Um, so this is a question I invested during round one and wondering if I do additional investments, how the investor benefits will be handled as putting them together for various levels of participation. So that's a great question. Thank you. So the way the investment is set up, um, if we, so round one, when people invest in round one, what they were doing was buying a preference share, which is linked to a 20% um, return. So as funding comes in from the movie, once it's released, then money goes back to pay all the preference shareholders back first. So just so you know, us as creators, we've got ordinary shares, which means we don't participate in any revenue until preference shareholders are paid back first plus 20%. Then you stay on as a shareholder thereafter. So that's not the end of the journey. You stay on as a preference shareholder. Um, and then what happens is we participate pro rata depending on your shares and our shares and we any future revenue gets split between us. Um, if someone, so we're doing a testing the waters campaign now where you can pledge and gauging by it's going and if it keeps going well, then we would be op open to opening up a round two of investment. At that point, it'll be the same mechanism if we get to that phase where people would invest and then they'd be given preference shares and it would be on the same, essentially on the same basis. The price might go up a little bit, just so you know, in round two, because the guys who invested in round one took a higher risk, but that's still in a debate, but it'll be, it'll be similar to round one. Um, but again, the people who invest in round two would get preference shares to answer that question. Um, and if, you, if you've got more questions, feel free to reach out. And thank you. There's, there's a really awesome comment there. So humble to be part of supporting this project. If I can just say to whoever that is, um, I, I also feel so humbled. I was saying to, to the team the other day, I think it's like surfing. Um, God creates the waves, and then we get to, to ride the waves. And it's such a privilege, yeah. When, when the movie is finished, will it be dubbed to different languages? Just to say, absolutely. Um, on Jungle Beat the movie, just to give you an example, and my vision is much bigger for David, we translated it into, I think it was over 10 different languages. Yeah, so we went into over, it was German, French, we went to Chinese, into Hindi, um, into Japanese, Korean, um, Spanish. So we, we really went to town um, on Jungle Beat the movie. And David, in keeping with our goal, and that's why it's such a great question, we want this to be the most watched animated theatrical film of all time as our goal. And coupled to that is definitely translation. And just so you know, we've got the experience, we know where to go, um, and we know how to do that. So absolutely, the movie will be translated into, into many different languages. Um, so vision and mission you have in mind with the movie. So let me see if I'm understanding that question. So, um, 
So the vision, and if, if I've got it wrong, feel free to tweak the question and re-ask it, but I, I'll try and answer if I'm understanding it. So the vision for the movie, just in terms of, and, I, and I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but I just want to really make it clear, is to make a world-class animated feature film that's got, if I, if I described it earlier, it's like a hybrid between Prince of Egypt and a movie like Tangled. So the energy and fun and, and watchability of Tangled, but then the authenticity and the beauty and the visual look of, um, of Prince of Egypt. And just to say, part of the vision is authenticity. I am super passionate about being ac or accurate and authentic to, to the Bible and the historical account of David. I was saying to some guys the other day, if you look at comic book fans, how upset they get if you break the rules of um, the comic book world. You can't take Superman's cape and put it on Spider-Man and just cross and break the rules. So part of our vision for the David movie is not just to make a masterpiece, but to make an entertaining masterpiece and one that is authentic and is true to its roots. Um, so that's part of the vision. Part of the mission for me, just going back, I, I quickly want to tell you the mission. And if I can quickly tell you a bit of my story, because it's linked to the mission. I grew up in Zimbabwe in Africa. Where I grew up, I watched my first film when I was probably 16 years old. Where we grew up was completely in the outdoors. Um, you could, on the one place where we used to go canoeing on the Zambezi River, you could canoe for five days and four nights, not see a human being, just elephant, buffalo, and it was just beautiful. And it was out there that for me, I fell in love with God and just connected with God in the most incredible way. And I was like, wow, he is just the most fun, adventurous, kind, incredible personality. And, and I, I was just like blown away by who I encountered in nature. When I went to university, I realized people's view of God was quite, quite dim. And, and, and I was like, oh my goodness, I think you've got, you haven't really met the, the real person. And so one of the missions behind David for me, when I read in Acts, I found in David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. I hope that by telling David's story, it opens a window into God's heart and that people might go away just really ignited and touched by David's story and, and, what it, and who he was, but that his heart is slowly connected, so closely connected to God's heart that that would create a bridge and a connection, that this movie would be a connection to God's heart. So that's, that's for me, is the mission. Um, and I hope I've answered your question well, but... And understood your question. If not, please reframe it, and and we can we can try and answer it another way. Um, is it going to be a musical movie like Prince of Egypt? So it'll be different to Prince of Egypt in some ways, but yes, absolutely a musical movie. And the one thing that we we really wanting to make sure is, is go back to what I was saying earlier is that we know that David wrote half the Psalms in the Bible, so he was an incredible songwriter. And one thing I don't really love in movies is when they just take music and shove it in. As for, for effect, but we are sitting on a golden opportunity because David, as I was saying, sorry, I'm repeating myself, is literally one of the world's most renowned and prolific songwriters. So it's in, it's authentic that in our telling of his story that he is musical. So the one way we're going to try and do it is when, when we've got music, it's he is going to actually sing. Um, and yes, so it's going to have some beautiful musical numbers um, and of different beats. Some of them are high beats, high energy, some are reflective. The one you watched in the demo, by the way, in the demo at the beginning of this live stream was um, Psalm 23 in Hebrew. So that was quite a, a beautiful song. It's, it's not a high energy song, as you can hear, but it's just beautiful. And it's that one we took the Psalm 23, translated it into Hebrew with the help of a Jewish rabbi. And then we he sang that in Hebrew. So I'm so excited about the musical element of this film. It is actually at the at the very core of this film is the musical DNA and spirit of the movie. Um, and that's why I believe it can lead on to a, to a Broadway musical. So in terms of the question was, how do we donate? Um, at the moment, uh, the way you do is you go to angel.com slash David. Um, and that's the best way, that, that's the best mechanism by which to support the film. It actually won't be a donation because you will be actually given preference shares in the film. But that's what we really want is for you to actually be part and genuine film with us and be part of the journey. So yeah, to answer your question, you go to angel.com slash David. And there's, you can also ask questions there on that website. There's a place to ask questions, but there's a lot of information on the movie and a lot more background on them. So it's in the top right-hand corner of the screen. Angel.com slash David is, is where you go. And if you, yeah, if you want to share or comment or like this post, please, please do just to build interest with other people. Get there to angel.com slash David as well. Um, I'll just see if there's any more questions on, on this live stream. 
Okay, so we've got one more like, one more question for the evening or for the daytime for you guys in the US, and that's that's coming in. And then I'll I'll just end um, with a bit of a summary and and after this last question, and then we'll move on. While we're waiting for that last question, um, I will just start saying that just to clarify. So okay, so it's still sorry, that's still the same question. How do we donate? Yeah, um, that's yeah. I'll, yeah, oh, our goal. Well, let me just wait. Is that is that question near coming, or should, should I move on? Just I don't want to jump the gun with. Ah, uh, okay. So the question was pulled out. So that's if you, you if you've got a last another thirty seconds to a minute while I'm wrapping. If you've got a question, a last question, please feel free to pop it in there. But um, I just want to share, uh, yeah, just to end off that. So our goal is to finish raising the funding this year, twenty twenty two. Um, and then production would so we we are in production with the with the five raise at the end of last year plus the nineteen point six we're continuing with production using that that five million dollars we raised while we raise the next thirty million dollars and if we're successful in that then production will flow on through twenty twenty two twenty three finish twenty four and then we'll release twenty twenty five so just to clarify that's the goal and that's why this year is such a critical year that we close off the funding and do it and and for those of you who've pledged not massive thank you we really really appreciate it because that is just moving us towards our goal moving us towards our target um and and that's yeah that's the one of the things about tonight was just a quick recap of where we are where we need to and some a bit of insights oh wow and there's someone called mark who just pledged five thousand dollars which is huge honestly that's that's so wonderful and thank you mark we we really appreciate um you joining us and one thing i wanted to say ah oh, there, there's an awesome question i'm going to come to you so please leave that question on screen because that, that's a great question. Um, the one thing I wanted to say, what blows me away about Angel and how they've also worked alongside us is if you guys join the pledging and you join the community and invest it later down the line, um, their communication is amazing. So it's just, I think, such a fun adventure to be part of because kept up to date um, on what's happening, how it's working, what stage we're at. And yeah, and it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. So the question is, will the movie build up to Goliath or beyond? And just so you know, so this is like such an awesome question. The, the movie starts with David as a shepherd boy. Um, and then about a third of the way through the movie is the fight with Goliath. And I actually want to just share with you guys something about that fight. Um, and then it goes on to when he goes into the wilderness and where he has to flee from Saul. And, when, and then it ends with where he becomes king of Judah. So that, that's where it stops is where he becomes king of Judah. As we know, there's like um, after he becomes king of Judah, there's another period of his life, and then he eventually becomes king of Israel and Judah. Um, but our film is tackling up to where he becomes king of Judah. And why that span of his life? Because if we we just ended with Goliath, I think there's so much we all face in life that David's story will really speak to us about. Because he had this massive challenge, he, he fought Goliath, um, but then there was just so much more that he had to learn after that. Just going through a wilderness experience, and I think. For all of us who are human, it's like to go through a wilderness experience. Um, so David's killing Goliath was not of David's journey. The other thing I really wanted to share, I've got a beautiful image of David that just uh, Goliath that just went, but I want to share with you that um, one of the things that I want to get out of this film is that when David killed Goliath, he, he removed a massive physical threat from Israel. But what we want to come out of the movie is by the end of the movie, how he, he changed people's hearts. So he was born into a world of fear and doubt. People were fearful, they were doubting, and, and that's pretty similar to our moment. There's a lot going on, a lot to be fearful about, but David bursts onto the scene. He's got faith and he believes. Um, when he kills Goliath, he doesn't really change people's hearts by that point. He starts to, but it's not the finished journey. By the end of the movie, what we show is how he's actually transformed a generation. And just to say on that point, it's not in the movie, but if you go and study David's mighty men, the list of mighty men. So before David, it's just silence into the corridors of history for like a long period before. he comes onto the scene and he inspires his generation you hear about a man who climbed into a snowy pit and fought a lion another guy who took on 300 men another one who fought a giant with six fingers and all of these people were inspired by david and his generation so and i think that speaks to god when you connect with god and you see who he is it really moves you and inspires you and yeah, so I think that's that's why we're telling this part of his story, just to tell you. So it's from Shepherd Boy to King of Judah with Goliath about a third of the way through the film. If I can just end, and sorry, I'm not getting onto the business end of it, but a couple of creative things on this on the movie. 
the, the one story that's not in our movie, but it reflects something about David. There's one scene which some of you will know, which he's in the wilderness fleeing from Saul. And we know he was born in the town of Bethlehem. And he just spoke. He said, oh, if only I could get water from the town of Bethlehem because the water was, he was desperate. He was thirsty and he was wishing for water from the town of Bethlehem. What the Bible very briefly refers to, but if you go and study it, is that um, Bethlehem was surrounded by a Philistine garrison. Three of his men heard him say this, and I find this so incredible. They fought, they went at night, they fought their way through a Philistine into the town of Bethlehem, drew him water, and brought it back to him. And I was like, wow, he, they must have loved David to do that. He didn't command them, he didn't ask them. They just heard him say that, and I'm like, wow, what had he done for them? What did, how had he captured their hearts? They must have loved him to go and do that. And that's the kind of character we want to bring out of the movie because that for me is the character of God. Once, once you connect with God and you, he wins your heart, there's nothing you won't do for him because you're just so magnetized by his character. And that's one of the things I wanted to bring out of the movie. The last thing I want to share is just more of a story from one of our trips to Israel, and it's about the David and Goliath scene. We went to the Valley of Eli. Um, we had this archaeologist with us, and I won't go into detail, but he was very clear. This is where the Israelite army was, and there was an archaeological reason why he was sure about that. And there's a very clear reason we know why where the Philistine army was. So we could draw a, a line across the valley, exactly the line David would have walked. And I just want to say, for those of you who haven't been to Israel, it's an, obviously an incredible um, experience to go there. But there's a lot of tourist attractions all around Israel. But the, the one place that has not got a tourist attraction is the Valley of Eli. It's just a fruit farm. And I found the farm and I said to him, could I walk, I explained to him what we were doing. And he said, no, make yourself at home, walk across the valley. So I walked the line that David walked. And as you walk across the valley, the river comes in and an oxbow's away. So David would have had to walk further from the Israelite army. And as I dipped down into the river with uh, the other director, Brent Dawes, um, all the ambient noise of like the doves and just the, the, the noise around just faded. It was dead quiet. Just imagine David kneeling in that brook, picking up five stones to fight Goliath. And then walked out of the river you could just hear the ambient noise start to build and we were just saying it's going to be incredible in the movie because you've got the sound of battle and as he drops down into the river to get the the stones suddenly it just goes beautifully quiet and there's that moment where he connects with god just before the battle with goliath and then as he starts to walk out of the river then you just start to hear the roar of the army on the top of goliath's head and i just think if we hadn't traveled to israel we'd never have experienced what the valley of eli is exactly like um yeah, so with you because it illustrates how incredible I think this story is going to be. There's so much rich material, but also our traveling to Israel was the most amazing experience. Yeah, so just to end off and say thank you to everyone on this call and this live stream. Thank you to everyone who's pledged. Um, wow, we have over fifty six thousand dollars in pledges just during this live stream. And yeah, thank you. Like I'm actually really humbled. By that, thank you, everyone who's backing this movie and getting behind us and joining the journey. Just huge appreciation. Thank you. Um, the one thing I wanted to say, which I just to end off with, is why some of you might ask, why animation? Um, and I just want to end off answering that question. I'll ask it myself and then answer it. <laughs> but animation has got this incredible power to cross race, cultural, age, and gender barriers better than any other any other medium. Every year, there's probably a thousand live action films made for cinema and before COVID, and then there's probably 15 um, animated feature films. If you look at the top 10 animated, uh, the top 10 movies every year, you'll find three or four animated films in the top 10. And that is just incredible because what it shows you is the incredible hitting power of animation. It crosses right across the globe. Then my other passion is obviously I love children. I love how faith, how much they've got this incredible faith. And so I, we could make a movie like Braveheart or Gladiator, and it could be amazing. But to make an animated feature film just makes it accessible to kids and 10-year-olds, 12-year-olds. But then the other beautiful thing about animation, like I said, it crosses race, age, culture, and gender barriers. So even a 94-year-old can enjoy animation. And I don't know how many of you have sit for hours on an end just watching an animated feature film with your kids over and over. And wow, somebody just pledged $10,000. And sorry, I keep calling it out, but I just want to be appreciative because um, thank you. That's absolutely incredible. So yeah, if you can watch the space, we're going to be starting to do more live streams. Um, and Patricia just pledged $5,000. So wow, Patricia and the previous person for 10. Thank you. Honestly, thank you. That's, that's amazing. And I just really want to honor you guys and say thank you out loud. Thank you so much. 
Um, so that's why animation, just so you guys know. Just to talk about this, please watch our social media. Um, look at angel.com slash David. That's, that's amazing. You can watch our Facebook page. You can watch our YouTube channel for updates. And we'll be doing another live stream very soon. And we'll be keeping in good communication with you. So just want to say thank you for joining the adventure. Um, maybe one last thing, which is just a bit of a, a uh, yeah, a bit of a talking about the adventure. Sorry, and I keep saying last thing, but this, this will definitely be the last thing. Um, as you walk up the stairs in our studio, there's two things I want to say. We've got a saying from Lord of the Rings that Gimli the Dwarf said. And it goes, he goes, death, small chance of success. What are we waiting for? And I just love that spirit of adventure of Gimli. It's like, yes, the odds are big. But if, I love that saying, if God is for us, who can be against us? And I, I love Gimli's adventurous spirit. Um, so I just want to say, as you join this, this ride, yeah, our lives on this earth is like one grain of sand on a beach. Um, let's, give it a, let's give it a good go. We only live once here, and let's, let's really step out and trust God and, and dream big. And it's going to be an adventure. It's going to be a story. Yeah, thank you for everyone who's pledged, everyone who's supporting the journey. We, we can't thank you enough. And there's so much more we're going to share as we go forward about how we're building out the movie, how we're keeping it accurate, how we're keeping it authentic. There's just so much deep material to share with everyone. But let me stop there and just say thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your time. I'll make sure there's guests on in future so it's not just me talking. And by now I'm sure half of you are getting bored. But we'll make sure that there's some fantastic guests on future live streams for all of us. So thank you, guys. If you want to hang around, I think they might show the demo one more time or maybe not. But... Just thank you. Good night from Cape Town. And yeah, good day if you're in the USA or on that side of the world. Thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. Look into my eyes. Do you see fear? You come at me with sword and spear. But I come in the name of the God of Israel. <laughs> between the eyes did you see that anyone uh, of course not okay then one more time <laughs> tally tally no, no. <laughs> i'm trying to protect us from this philistine <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 whoa. no not that way <laughs> ah. come on Back to your mom. Right, Philistine. Oh, wait. Right between the eyes. Oh, of course. That one you saw. Tally! Tally, no! Coming, girl. Ah. Whoa, whoa, it, easy, ah. Shira, Shira. I will bring her home safely. <sighs> whoa. I'm almost in love!
Uh. Oh, that doesn't help. <laughs> that does. Stop. Thank you. Hehehe. <laughs> 